all the weapons that were supposed to go to the anti-Castro Cubans. And it actually ended up in the hands of the Israelis to fight the Palestinians, believe it or not. Um, it's We don't ever know that the rifle ever actually even made it to um, Klein's, right, in Chicago. Uh, all that stuff in Klein's seems to have been faked after the fact. And so a lot of the physical paper trail that we have all seemingly was faked after the fact. And we don't have mm. any of the originals. All we have are like photocopies of stuff, which is like makes no sense at all. Right. You'd think they would at least keep the originals in the uh, in the archive, but they didn't. So, uh, but yes, back to Jack Valenti. Jack Valenti, um, to me, uh, the proof in the pudding of Jack Valenti being the shooter on the knoll simply comes from the fact that when the Secret Service car pulls into Dealey Plaza, there's 10 men on it. Everyone in that Secret Service car knew what was coming. Because at this point, there's only eight men left in that car. But by the time the Secret Service car gets past the triple underpass, as is depicted in McIntyre photo number two, the Secret Service car is back to having 10 men on it, hmm. which means they picked up two passengers. Those two passengers by sight alone are obviously Jack Valenti and David Morales, the legendary David Morales, who everyone's been trying to place and connect to the Kennedy assassination for 60 years.